Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We have our first like 20 degree night coming up. And so I'm kind of like wanting to get out there and pick all the flowers. How many days away is it? Oh geez, um, I think it's either tonight. No, it's tomorrow night. Uh, we have, well, tomorrow night we have our first freeze at 31, which that might change. But then Friday morning, it's supposed to be 27. Mm. Saturday morning, 22. Sunday morning, 20. Three and then 24, and then we go back up into the mid 30s. Should probably turn the water off. Yeah, probably should. And that will take, you know, it's like we get our first freeze, and then the next day we're in the low 20s. So, yeah. like, I want my um, dahlias to freeze once, I want mm -hmm. the tops to die back, and then I want to dig, but it gives you one day. Yeah. You know? Well, at least you know what you'll be doing on that one day. Yeah, and you know, it's fine. Like, kind of let the chips fall where they may you know yeah. and stuff, stuff like that i'm not going to stress about it but i did get them all tagged and i was trying to figure out how could i take a picture of myself in the middle of the dahlias like going yes <laughs> <laughs> because i felt so good after i got that done next year we're going to reduce the amount of dahlias we have like we have seven rows now and six of them are 60 feet long and one of them is 47. we're going to eliminate two of the rows and we're gonna use the same amount of space for five rows. So we're gonna have more space in between mm. um, and I can hone down my selection and I'll be doing like tuber giveaway big time uh, because I do want to like, there's a lot of them I've had for a long time and I just wanna try something new, mm -hmm. you know? So we just want more space to do stuff because it was such a bear to tag those things because it's so thick. By the end, I was just plowing through, breaking branches, just didn't even care. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just gotta get this done um, before I run out of time. Anyway, I'm thankful for that. I'm also thankful to all of you guys who made an order from our website for merch last week. I mentioned in our recap video that we were doing a 20% off merch and we just added a like a crew neck, mm -hmm. a long sleeve tee and then like a crew neck sweatshirt, right? Mm -hmm. There was just a couple of new things and tons of you ordered and I just wanted to thank you for your support in that way. And thank you to Ken and Natalie for doing a great job with the shop. It's going great and we're just like gonna continue adding some things. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Let's jump into the videos for this past week. The first one was making applesauce with our homegrown wormy apples. Lovely. Yummy. <laughs> and then dried flowers for our mantle. That video actually took me like, I started it one evening and then finished it like. Oh yeah, like several days later. Yeah, right? I don't think it was the next morning, was it? I think it was. The span of weekend. Okay, I think so. I can't remember. Anyway, it was kind of one of those that, it was fun. I just had to kind of get um, done. And that jump. was the one that we lost a bunch of footage, right? Yes. I deleted the footage. So what happened is we just upgraded our phones and uh, Aaron was giving his phone to his sister mm -hmm. and I used his old phone thinking it was our filming phone. We've got phones everywhere. <laughs> thought it was our filming phone. And so I grabbed that one and I used it for the inside footage when I was doing the applesauce because the phones just do better with low light situations. And then Aaron grabbed his phone because it's not the filming phone right. and wiped it and then gave it to his sister. I'm like, where's, where's all my footage? Thankfully I had taken one little footage of me like stirring the apples so that I could send it to my mom and be like, look what I'm doing today. Yeah. So that's the only footage we had. Well, and it would have, it would have uploaded to iCloud except for I on purpose, I, I on purpose disable that feature because we take too much footage. Like it would just fill up iCloud. Yeah. Because we, you know, if you have an iPhone record for like hours on mm -hmm. end, it's like you don't really want to upload that because yeah. it would just take up too much space. I mean, it was sad, but yeah. like, what are you going to do? And it's out. not a complicated process to make applesauce. So, and I explained it, I think, mm -hmm. thankfully, in the, in before I even did it. Anyway. And then after we were done with that, I did talk about coddling moth damage on our apple trees and some of the methods that I might uh, try next year that are organic with no spray sort of situation. Uh, and then after that, we did a dried flower. They aren't dried, they are now, but flowers that dry really well into mantle arrangements so that I could put something on our mantle that could stay until after Thanksgiving. That I didn't have to swap out. Uh, and they look really pretty. Uh, the flowers do like desiccate, you know, as they dry, they kind of like shrink a little bit. So I'm seeing little spots where I can tuck in more straw flowers 
if, you know, if you should want to kind of bolster an arrangement like that, you can do that. And I actually had the buckets that I had left over from that project sitting right here on the floor. So I could just go tuck those things in. Um, anyway, Marsha said, I loved your candy dish. I did kind of show it because I showed all three sides of our fireplace. It's like a um, like chandelier looking one. There's a marble base and then like gold, a gold stand, and then the glass bowl with little crystals hanging off of it. I picked that up uh, at an antique store. And my mom has a collection of those too. She's got like three or four in different sizes uh, that she has scattered about on tables with <laughs> candies in them. Uh, Sharon said, I know this is way off topic, but what is the name of the pink rose bush with large red hips in the fall and winter? That is a Morden blush, M-O-R-D-E-N, Morden blush, the pale pink flowers, but huge, big, reddish orange hips. They're beautiful. Gloria said, what uh, gorgeous fall arrangements. Thank you. I would love to grow that many different gourds and pumpkins are so pretty. Where do you get most of your seeds for those? So several places. Uh, I always start at my parents' garden center. They have a huge selection of seeds and I get a lot of like Cinderella, jack-o'-lantern, um, that sort of thing there. A lot of uh, butternut, I couldn't think mm -hmm. of that. And they do carry like botanical interests and uh, Snake River Seed Cooperative. I get some from them as well. I get some from Baker Creek has some really oddball varieties. Um, my mom and dad for Christmas this last year got me some like random varieties off Etsy. Um, there was the Midnight Pumpkin, Snowball, which the Snowball Pumpkin produced 93 plus white pumpkins like this big, like pretty sizable white pumpkins on one vine. Hmm. Um, I also get some from Johnny's. That's pretty much where I get them. Jay Tal Talia said, have you considered using concrete stain to stain some of the orange fireplace rocks that you don't like? I actually sent you a link mm -hmm. to a stain that I could try. And you know, the, the rock that we're using outside that has the orange edges kind of reminds me a lot of the fireplace rock. And yeah. I thought I could try a little bit of that stain. The thing is, I don't want them to look painted. I do not like that look. I also don't like that smear look mm -hmm. where you can kind of like, it's like kind of white, but you can kind of see some dark behind it. Sure. It looks too shabby. Um, so if I could get in there and just like change the color tone of the rocks and not make it look like it has been stained or painted, I would like that. I would like it to be wood. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I feel like we should just wait until and just take the whole thing down when it, when the time is right. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I would. I mean, you could play around with it, but you don't want to make it worse necessarily. Well, I think I could test it though on some of those rocks. Like yeah. I could get a rock, a small one from outside and just like hold it up to our fireplace and see yeah. if it it kind of works but we could see at least how it covers the orange or mutes it a little bit i was in our white bathroom this morning and i was just thinking to myself like there's no <laughs> it's the reason. white bathroom it sounds nice but it's, yeah, not. it's not there's no reason that we shouldn't have done <laughs> like the bare minimum in, I know. in the bathroom like a very cheap reno yeah because you can get I mean, like just inserts, eat. like a shower yeah, going insert. to Home Depot and getting like yeah. the cheapest materials you can would, would be, be an upgrade. <laughs> it's like, um, also it's got the, uh, above the sink, like the vanity, there's like those, those cupboards yeah. that are just like attached to the wall, but they come out and it's like, they have the shroud over the sink and then it's got the light fixture with the big white balls right. in front of it. Oh. <gasps> It's so bad. And, and the glass blocks. Oh, the glass blocks. And then it's got subway tile. Oh, it's just, it's horrible. Well, the tile was done poorly as well. Like, yes. you know, around the toilet area. It's like, it's like the classic, somebody just took like, it's like a mosaic. It is like a mosaic, <laughs> but it's not supposed to be. No. It's horrible. It's never supposed to look like a mosaic. And then we do have a hot water heater in that bathroom. So our hot water heater for the new side of the house is upstairs and it knocks in the walls. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you turn on hot water, you like in the kitchen, it's like knock, 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 knock. It's the, I remember when we moved in mm -hmm. that night, I texted Dennis. Yeah. I'm like, what is that sound in the walls? It sounds like, I mean, it's, it's the knocking, but it almost sounds like dripping water. But, but it's like, like this. Loud. In yeah. the walls. <laughs> We've got some quirks going on. So around that hot water heater, it's like they gutted that space at one point. Like it was something like a closet mm -hmm. and then they took the closet out. So there's like bits of linoleum, like heinous linoleum on the ground and then holes in the wall like i could just reach my hand inside the wall there's yeah, no yeah because we had a leak at one point <gasps> so they had we had to i, I need to put like I... a curtain over that or something so you just don't even see it yeah we should just like when we get ready to reno that space we should just like do a little quick tour of it i'm cute yeah it's like it... i'm curious if anybody else is in that position though where it's like you want 
to do a full renovation. And so you end up just like living with something super, like really crappy for yeah. like But the thing is, years. the shower works. I, you have... <laughs> You have to, though it's a, a walk-in shower, you have to walk all the way in to turn the water off and there's no way to get away from it. So yeah, except for, I put one of those... Um, oh, the handheld the so hand you can at things. least hold yeah. it down. So but, I've used it a couple times and uh -huh. I, I pull that off. So yeah, the shower so works, the toilet works, direction. and the sink works. I mean, that's all that really matters. Yeah. It's all just like yeah, aesthetic stuff. Yeah. But still, it's just, you look at those kinds of things and think like, yeah. what? <laughs> Um, Mary said, uh, how do you keep the pumpkins and squash from rotting for so long? Uh, I think it helps that we're pretty dry here. They're not subjected to a whole lot of water in our area. Although it was sprinkling this morning, but like, yeah, but not sprinkling probably didn't even register on the tennis. No, it didn't even say it's raining at garden answer. Yeah. It's supposed to, I think it was supposed to rain later today. Maybe let's my look. Oh, 1 p.m. We have a 30% chance. I think we're going to try to get out and do a like last of the season garden tour for you guys today, uh, depending on the weather. It's kind of breezy, but it's overcast. And we do still have some plants out there, so I think it's our last shot. Anyway, I think because they're not getting rained on constantly, there's not a lot of moisture, they just tend to last longer. Uh, and I do wait till they're fully cured before I put them out. Like the ones inside, there's no soft spots, they're completely cured, and those will be fine all the way until I'm ready to take them off the mantle and decorate for Christmas. All my 10 kids said making applesauce today. Love your flower arrangements. Where do you get the metal screening to hold the flowers in place? That is just chicken wire. I just pick up a roll of it. I've got two rolls, one that's got like one inch holes and one that's got like two or two and a half inch holes. It's nice to have the different sizes because if you're doing an arrangement that's got bigger, thicker branches, it's really hard to use the small chicken wire to do that. Uh, but you just cut off a, a piece and just kind of wad it together and shove it down in your vase. The, having that floral tape is very handy though because it'll still kind of want to rock, especially once you get weight in there. So if you put a couple pieces of tape over the top, it'll kind of help hold everything together. But it works well in solid vases, not so much for glass. Do you remember we did uh, glass arrangements with Cindy Davison from the oh, Second yeah. Perch Boy. in Southern California like a long time ago? But she showed us how to do like willow branch. So you can take branches from, flexible branches from really anything, take all the leaves off. So all you've got is branches and you can kind of like twirl them together, mm -hmm. shove them down in the vase. And that looks pretty as a frog for glass vases. Yeah. That way you're not seeing metal and wire down in there. You're seeing just pretty floor, uh, plant material yeah. in the vase. Synergy said, how do you keep from bringing spiders into your house with flower arrangements? I did an arrangement of hydrangeas that I wanted to last after they dried too, but I ended up tossing it. I had spiders on my table and webs from the arrangement to the light fixture above. For the couple weeks, I kept the arrangement. Spiders on top of cups on the dining room table was the last straw. So out the arrangement went. I don't know. I mean, you can d dip your flowers. I was doing that in the beginning with the thrip issue. You can get a bucket of water. You dip your flower in the water. You can put a little bit of soap in the water too, just a tiny bit. Dip your flowers and then kind of shake them off and let them dry a bit before you do your arrangement. And that, are, that removes a lot of them. Other than that, like, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I really haven't had that issue. And our thrip population is so like down at this point, I don't worry about even putting flowers in my house with the thrips anymore. Um, I think after next year we'll have it, we'll have it licked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next video is strawberry propagation update, Semper Vivums by the Pond and Evergreens for the Hartley. A little bit of a, I feel like all of our videos lately have been random assortments because I'm just trying to check projects off the list that sure. I want to get done before it gets too cold. But I showed you the Greenstock Vertical Garden with the strawberry propagation project we had going on. 100% success rate on those. And let me just show you one of the ones I brought in here. Okay, so I need to water these today. They're pretty weighty, but the top looks a little dry. So strawberries do the best when you leave the runners attached to the mother plant until the little babies root. If you cut them off the mother plant, then they are trying to create roots and stay alive all on their own. But I had this huge pile you know, of runners I cut off that I couldn't use. I didn't have enough space for in the other vertical garden. So I just went ahead and potted a few of them up. The success rate on doing that is far lower, but you can see that the tops of all of them died back. They all wilted and died back. So I cut them back, you keep them moist. A lot of times they'll create roots and then push new growth after several weeks, which some of mine are starting to do. Some of them are not. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we'll get a few plants from the whole thing. It's better than nothing, you what know? What would you say your percentage on success this? rate? Yeah. Oh, like 30, mm. maybe. 
Like that's generous. generous. Yeah. Still can do it. If you wanted to and you wanted to propagate every single plant, you can get little baggies, mm -hmm. put soil in them and just rubber band them to the, the, the baby plant on the runner. Leave the runner attached, let them dangle there, you know, and then they'll create roots and you can cut them off after that point. Or, sure. you know, put pots all, all over the place around the mother plant to do that. And then we took some stems out by the pond. I just wanted to put some of that succulent sort of interest around the rocks. I didn't know if I was going to love that look, though, out there because I don't want it to look desert. I want it to look like our mountains that we go to, you know, an hour away from here. Uh, but I do really like how they turned out. And then evergreens for the Hartley, just potted up a few evergreens we had hanging out in the greenhouse in the high tunnel, got them into some beautiful pots and put around the back. And it looks like... Looks I, good. Yeah, I love that look. It looks simple still, but it has a little bit more bulk and fluff. Mm -hmm. Pretty things to look at back there. Uh, Vinny said, your strawberry green stock propagations are so impressive. Thankful, thanks for the detailed explanation. I was wondering if you planted any hollyhocks this year or did they regrow from last year's plants? I planted so many hollyhocks this year. A lot of them bloomed this year. We had some chestnut brown that were so pretty. Halo apricot, the uh, it something champagne, uh, doublet champagne. I don't know, I did it in a video. We started those seeds. And then there's a light yellow one that's not gonna bloom until next year, but they did a beautifully. They're beautiful plants. You know, hollyhocks don't do it for me. They're That's, very country. Yeah, it's just not a... Are they too messy for you? Yeah, they're yeah. too messy. It's like there's... Um, here's what it is. I like plants where they have their show, but like they don't look like trash most of the time. There's a lot of plants that it's like, you know, they look great for like a week, but they kind of didn't look great leading up to that, and they look really bad after that. Like, give me an example. Well, okay, one thing that I don't like, um, I love tulips and mm -hmm. daffodils and stuff. Yeah. I hate that you have to wait until yeah. their foliage dies back. Yeah. Because they they look like trash yeah, they for a long time. Mm -hmm. They look wor they look bad for longer than they were looking good. That's what it is. That's the best. The ratio needs to be The proper, ratio needs proper. to be yeah. Whereas like trees and evergreens. Mhm. Mm I mean, they lose their But you, you know, have the structure and they're still Yeah, you have yeah. the structure. And they don't think they look bad. It's just, you know, it's like what everything looks like. Hollyhocks, my parents' driveway is lined with hollyhocks, and they've been there since probably before we, we lived there. And, you know, my parents, my parents' house is out in the country, and it just has that, like, warm, nostalgic feeling to me. I like them. Yeah. I think they're pretty. Uh, Hannah said, did you solve the koi mystery? <laughs> no. I don't know what the deal is. People were trying to correct my math. Yeah. In the last time I talked about it. So, um, were you wrong? No, I was not wrong. Hmm. I just think they were forgetting that I meant 11 koi, not 11, including the shark. We have 12, including the shark. There's oh. 11 koi and one shark. So we got six koi and the shark in the beginning. So just let's put the shark out of the picture. That's a different breed. Okay. So there's, hold on real quick. Benjamin's okay. calling. Oh, Benjamin's calling you. <laughs> hold on. What's up? Yeah. I did. I did the password. Oh, he <laughs> just did that. <laughs> he did the Minecraft password. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. He's okay. got a. He has to request time uh -huh. on the on the tablet. That's so funny. Um. Anyway, so the shark. Let's put that one out of the picture. We started with six koi, and then Greg brought four. Okay, so we should have ten. We have eleven koi mm -hmm. in there. Um. Yeah, and I don't know where that eleventh one came from. That's Snuck the in. That's the mystery. And the fact that they're all bigger. It's not like there was a baby in there. Maybe Greg just like found an extra one yeah. in his RV. Yeah. It was like. Yeah, just put that one in there. <laughs> yeah, so I, don't, I have no idea. Um, Marinda said, is a new, as a new strawberry grower, I love all the ideas and tips for growing them. Question, did you harvest the red grapes in the garden? I just remember seeing the video of the green ones. We've just been harvesting and eating those fresh. They stay good on the vine for so long. Um, and every time we drive by too, we're like, it smells, it like perfumes the air. It smells so good. So we're just eating those fresh. Uh, Roxanne said, wondering if you cut back the geraniums that you have in the Hartley for winter or will they just keep growing? They'll just keep growing. They'll do their thing. They're kind of going through that like fall period though where I'm grooming quite a lot of leaves off of them. I just fertilized them though. Um, and there might, might be a point where I cut them back, but I have the coral ones that we took out of the chicken coop window box last fall. 
so fall of 2022, I took them out, potted them, put them in the Hartley, and they've been in there ever since, blooming, ever since. They go through periods, though, where they like look really good, and then a period where they kind of like, it's like they need to rest or something, sure. and they kind of lose some leaves and look a little scrawny, and then they flush back, and yeah. But I did put the ones from the chicken coop that I did later on, I um, put those all in the plastic greenhouse, and they should be fine for the winter, hopefully. Some of them kind of wilted down a little bit, but I think they'll pick back up. Christy said, how do you keep your concrete or terracotta pots from freezing and cracking? I'm in the same zone you're in and my containers freeze and crack, so I have to bring them in. Maybe because we get more rain, that is exactly it. I have only ever had one, two terracotta pots crack. Mm -hmm. And I leave everything out. I don't bring anything in, unless it's like, I'm gonna bring in the macrophylla hydrangeas I've got by the back kitchen entrance. I'm gonna protect those um, because they've got plants I wanna save in them. But yeah, everything else I leave out, except for the ones under, one of the ones under the flower shed cracked because it got all the rainfall. We don't have a gutter on the front of that. Mm -hmm. So we got all the moisture and then that one, that one did crack, but one of them didn't. I have two out there. And then I had another one cracked by the chicken coop. But I think, yeah, it just has to do with the amount of moisture you get. Also the shape of the pots too. Oftentimes if your pots are shaped like this, they can freeze up, you know, and kind of push up without pushing out. If your pots go in at all and the, the soil has a hard time like making any adjustments sure, for yeah. size it'll crack them out a little bit harder or easier. Tammy said, how long should you leave the Alberta spruce in the container? I have one in the container and it's its second season. Well, you could definitely, if you can slide it out of the container at all and look at the root ball, that's a good indicator to see how much room the roots have left. A lot of times those type of spruce, Alberta spruce anyway, can handle being kind of constricted for quite a long time. So as long as your plant is happy, you're probably okay. Um, usually, you know, as they get bigger and need more space, they'll require more nutrients for you and pro from you and probably more water uh, because they just don't have the extra soil in there to con conserve it or mm -hmm. like hold on to it so the plant can use it. So, uh, you know, just depending on the size of pot you've got, how healthy your plant is, I would say just keep going. Until... How big does an Alberta spruce get? I think they get like eight by six or mm. something, right? So not enormous, but sure. like in the pot I put mine in, two, two seasons probably max for mm. that one. But again, it depends on where you've got it. This one's not gonna be in full sun, so it's not gonna put on growth as fast as it would in full sun. It's also protected, so it's gonna stay moist longer than it would as if, if it was exposed. There's just too many factors. Yeah, a lot of variables. I hate giving like exact answers. Three quarts of water every yeah, four hours. Right. <laughs> Uh, Jessica said, I would love to plant evergreens in fall and winter in pots, but I don't want to risk the pots cracking because it's so cold. I don't like the plastic pots either. Can you suggest any pot material that looks pretty? <sighs> resin. There's a lot of resin containers. But that, that can pretty, crack too. That could, yeah, that could crack. I've, yeah, I think. You could look at the, um, like the Crescent Garden. They're plastic, but some of them look okay. I wonder too, if you're dealing with thicker concrete, unique stone pots are like thick. That's true. And substantial. Yeah. And I think it would take a substantial amount of freezing to do anything harmful to those pots. Yeah. Like, um, we've experienced them like chip off the, like, uh, part of them, they'll chip, but not crack. Mm -hmm. But just like off the top, it's not like yeah. the integrity of the pot is... Yeah, right. It's harmed. Bev said, you talked about wintering these dwarf evergreens outside. Could you tell us how to winter over your dwarf peach? I believe it's in a pot also. And there it sits all winter long. <laughs> I need to take it out because that peach has been in there. Long time. Like three or four years at this point. And like the soil is so low. Have you looked at mm -hmm. that? It's like this far below the lip of the pot. I don't know where the soil went. Yeah. It's just gone. Um, and it was needing like some iron this year, but it still produced fruit and, you know, uh, yeah, so it just sits out there. That's a resin container. Yeah. I think that that is a Crescent Garden It container. is a Crescent Garden, but it's not plastic. It's like real tough material. Oh, really? Maybe I, I'm not me remembering that No, right. I think it's plastic. You, yeah. Yeah, you think so? I mean, so? it's thick. It's like, yeah. an, it's not like, you know, flimsy plastic. Right. Yeah, but it just sits out there. We just make sure to water every few weeks. The other thing um, about some of the Crescent Garden containers, this is not like an ad or anything, but... Um, a lot of them are double walled and so yeah. it's kind of like um An like error a, insulation like a cooler you know how mm -hmm. it's like yeah it'll it'll insulate mm -hmm. better so next video was chicken coop flower bed maintenance pruning transplanting and fall plants so yeah i did just that pruned back some things um it was really warm that day too like it 
I wasn't, I talked about like pruning so hard on things so late in the season, but at the point that I did that project, we had like a 10 day that was looking pretty nice without any freezing temperatures. Uh, but I did transplant the um, basket of gold alyssum. I have transplanted some brunera. I have since transplanted the iris and I dug up the geraniums and repotted those, planted some fall plants that I had left over. I mean, it's like a menagerie. Mm -hmm. I just kind of popped stuff where I could because I just, I wanted to utilize them. I didn't want them to sit in the greenhouse and just go to waste. So Anita said those brunera were huge. I sadly lost my one and only, and I'm not sure why. Everything around it was fine. I'll need to try again. Wondering, could you have split that basket of gold? <laughs> no. Well, possibly. But yeah, the, the Brunera was impressive. And those I could have split too, but I didn't want to. Nah. James said, do you experience plant shock when transplanting? Sometimes, like with the basket of gold that we had the wilt, a lot of times it just takes them a minute and they'll perk back up. Uh, I don't know that these will have enough time to perk back up. The Brunera looks good though. Like most of the stuff that we transplant takes. It's just being patient with it. And there might be a period where it looks kind of iffy. Uh, next question, how long did your window box cocoa liner last? Trying to figure out if I should plan to replace mine next spring or if I can reasonably expect to get a second year. That's, that was the second year on that one. And when I took out the second geranium, a big hole just punched right through it. <laughs> so I had to go get a new one. But you got two years out of it. Got two years out of it. Uh, maybe more, maybe more than that. Really? I get three seasons out of that one. I remember when I planted it up this spring, I was like, Ooh, I don't know. Huh. So yeah, it's small enough that the roots kind of hold everything sure. together. If you can get yeah. it going. As long as it's, uh, strong enough in the spring, yeah, then it'll probably be fine. Yeah. By the time they root. Liz said, I noticed your smoke bush has big, long canes. Mine does too. I want to trim them back, but I'm not sure if this is the right time. When do you prune yours? Um, you know, I did notice mine has those big long canes. If they bother you, I would just prune them now. I, now. I could go out there and prune those back now. Um, they bloom on old wood. So if you want to make sure that you get your blooms on those branches before, you know, you take them off, then you could wait till after it's done blooming in the early summer. Otherwise you want to do your pruning kind of in the spring, but usually with a smoke bush, it's not like something that is needed or mm -hmm. necessary. So unless you've got those random wild arms. Brando272 said, looks great. What type of tiny Christmas tree evergreen is that by the roses by the chicken coop? Um, you've inspired me so much of my uh, garden this summer and I need blue winter interests that will stay smaller. Oh, so the blue evergreen that's in the flower beds, that's a weeping blue spruce. Um, and then the green one in the pot is a Norway spruce. P.S. Tell Aaron, hold tight on the maples. Our autumn blaze did that brownish red this to this year. And then bam, one morning this year, they are all beautiful red all over town. Ours have more red in them now too. The ones that still have leaves. Yeah. Some of them have lost all their leaves. Yeah. Rhonda said, how warm is it there? Laura has on a hooded winter coat and Benjamin has bare feet and flip flops. Okay. I was hoping a question like that would make it in because I did notice that one. I wear vests a lot because like I stay, it keeps my core warm, but my arms stay cooler mm -hmm. um, and then also I start working in the morning when it's quite a bit cooler and I need that extra layer but as the day warms up it's like I kind of forget that I have it on and I kind of get used to the heat as you go so well by the end of the day yesterday I took it off I'm like dang I'm hot all of a sudden I realized I'm hot uh, but most of the time I just like continue on and I love having pockets because I usually have a garden marker. I have like supplies that day. I had those coax cables and I had a cutter in my pocket. Um, I usually have chapstick, you know, so I like to have it cause I carry all my things. So I'll put up with a little extra heat, but Benjamin, man, he, well, when he came out, it was later in the day. So it was warmer. Mm -hmm. He always runs hot yeah. all the time. Like that dude does not want to wear he socks. Doesn't, uh, he doesn't sleep he, with a blanket. A no. lot of times. Yeah, he kicks he'll it kick off. his blanket. I mean, he'll start with a blanket, but then he'll kick it off mm -hmm. and leave it off all night. Sometimes I'll go in there and like put his blanket over him just because it makes me feel better yeah. and it's soon just off. Yeah. He's dead. And we don't want keep it. our house like all that warm. He just runs night. warm. Yeah. <laughs> Roma said, have you ever grown roses from cuttings? I am not sure that I actually have. I've done a few different things from cuttings. We did figs last year and they, they did beautifully and I gave away all but two. I've got two in the greenhouse still. Um, and actually produced fruit. All of them did like one or two little figs per cutting the first year. I thought that was pretty cool. Cool. Um, you know, my parents have a garden center and they carry thousands of roses every year. So in the rose realm, I haven't really found like the desire to do that because I'll just wait till they get one that's, you know, already rooted to kind of take some of that time mm -hmm. and effort out of the process for me anyway. Not that I wouldn't ever do it. 
Because it's interesting. It's like interesting projects. Yeah. I wonder what would precip- precipitate you propagating roses. I don't know. Yeah, I could see you doing it at some point. But you would need a reason for it. Probably, yeah. Uh, J.H. said, I've never seen your chicken coop before. So pretty. I was wondering how late into the season you can prune. I only asked because I have some branches I want to trim. Uh, you know, we, we prune all the time. I think you can prune whenever, right? Yeah. I mean, you want to be careful not to do too much or to expose too much undergrowth if it's going to get really cold. Um, you know, it's less risky if you do it when it's starting to warm up in the spring, you know. That's kind of rule of thumb, but uh, we, if there's wild branches on anything or anything that needs a structural tr- trim, we'll do it pretty much any time, as long as it's not major. Next video was planting a peaceful centerpiece for the Hartley, transplanting a rose and houseplant fertilizing. That was a really peaceful project for me. I was just excited that I got my hands on some of that Irish moss. I think it's so pretty, and for Christmas time, I wanted to have some of that to use in arrangements, so I got a couple flats of it and have it in the high tunnel. Um, But I just used a low bowl that I've used for so many projects before, and um, filled it up with a piece of like driftwood, a couple white cyclamen, and asparagus fern, and that Irish moss, and it's just, Very peaceful. Um, And then I transplanted a Bathsheba climbing rose, just like it looked like from (laughs) no man's land. Back there sort of by the pond. Um, It was in the flower bed and I noticed a rose coming back up and I thought it was maybe, we have this pesky red climbing rose that I could like never get rid of. I asked multiple different people to dig that out, remember? I think Chris tried once, I think the Shippies tried once and it just kept coming back. I'm like, (laughs) what is this? is, no, is somebody digging the wrong rose? Like, yeah. what's going on here? And it was kind of in the same location, so I thought, that dang rose will not die, and it's coming back. But we waited on it, and it bloomed, and it was the Bathsheba that I had mm. planted back there. So I got that transplanted. Hopefully that one takes, because that one barely, I mean, you could see it was out there with no water. Like, that was growing with no water all season. Um, it came up That's and That's amazing just, to me that... I know. That some things can do that with no water, and mm-hmm. then there's other stuff that it's just like... A day or two with hot water, and it's like, the. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just die now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And then I did uh, fertilize all the houseplants in the Hartley that day. Uh, Duder said, who picks your uh, thumbnails for every video? I watch each and every one and was just curious. That'd be you. I do, yeah. And I put in very little effort (laughs) into the thumbnails. (laughs) Like, I always grab, like, us, I mean, almost all of this, 99% of the time, I grab a uh, some uh, like a screen grab from the actual video because I feel like I, I don't like clickbait mm-hmm. and I don't like when people misrepresent videos mm-hmm. and I figure well if you just grab a screenshot from somewhere in the video like that existed in the video somewhere so yeah. you know yeah Donna said do you have any fake plants anywhere at the moment no I did pick up some fake white tulips at Marshall's. They were part of the Martha Stewart line, and they looked pretty dang real. I posted a picture on Instagram because I put them just in a glass vase inside the great room, and they lasted for months and months and months before I'm like, these are out of season now. I should probably put those away. But it was nice to have that arrangement just chill there for a long time and not have to swap it out. I do not. I love fresh flowers. I do not like cleaning up fresh flowers like taking them out of the vase oh, yeah. and disposing of the flowers and cleaning the vases because oftentimes I can't put them in the dishwasher. And uh, so that was, that was nice, but I, they're, they're put away for now. Jenny said, what happened to the rose? Also, it's a, a good to apply biotone. Is it good to apply biotone at this time of year? I didn't know since they are about to sleep for winter. Um, so what happened to the rose? I transplanted it. Maybe like, uh, why was it in a position it was in or why was it there? Uh, it was there because there was a flower bed there before we did, destructed, de, destructed, destructed, is I that what I don't know. Tore apart that garden. Yeah. Um, and we thought all the plants were gone and there were some that came back. Uh, and then biotone. Yes. I still do biotone for everything. Biotone starter fertilizer is focusing on root development, not upward growth. Um, And while the plants look asleep during the winter, the roots are still slowly working underneath the soil. And um, even if they're not utilizing a lot of the biotone in there, they will come spring when it gets warm enough. You know, we're not introducing tons of moisture. It's not going to leach out. It'll still be there in the spring, right beneath those roots, so that when that plant wakes up, it has something to just, like, gobble up right away, and it can start growing. 
So I still do it all the time. Jimber, Jimberly said, any idea where to source? <laughs> Such a funny so, name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any idea where to source those big bowl style planters? Those came from, somebody sent them out. Was it like MPG or where did those gray planters come from? Somebody sent us the set a long time ago. Which planters? The gray bowl. That low gray bowl. Oh. Was it MPG and yeah, they supplied maybe it was. Home Depot? Yeah. Or was one of the suppliers that Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's a blast from the past. I know. Um, Elsa said, where do you purchase the stone table in the Hartley? That came from our ho- our house. Our yeah. house. R A R H A U S. Now, sticker shock when you look at the price of that table. I waited until it went on sale. I waited for a long time for that table and I waited a long time for the one that I bought for the dining room. Because mm-hmm. they were the ones that, like, I have a hard time. I get one idea in my mind of what I want for a space, and I can never find, like, a cheaper version. Mm-hmm. Like, where are these companies that are making tables that could copy some of these, like, high-end tables? Just copy it to make it cheaper. <laughs> like, I feel like they're missing a big opportunity. Yeah. Like, you're building tables that look similar. Like, why can't you build something that's like cooler looking but not as expensive why it doesn't look like the craftsmanship is like the cuts are uh, wildly different i mean i know the like quality of wood is going to be different Mm -hmm. all of that but like the shape of things right yeah i don't know why can't the shape be similar is there any like uh copyright or not copyright but but they um, could tweak it like they could do it pretty much the same but maybe like a tiny bit different better I don't know. So anyway, I find those things and then I just wait and wait and wait. And if I haven't found something in like two or three years that can compete, I'll just wait for a sale and then I'll pick it up that way. So I love that table so much. Santia said, how often do you fertilize indoor plants and do you fertilize in winter as well? Fertilize less in the winter because even in the Hartley where we've got some heat going, we um, barely have the heat going just enough to make the plants okay. Um, so fertilizing will go way down. Fertilizing house plants doesn't happen as often as it should for me. Like it should happen minimum of once a month, um, but every couple weeks. It I was be. wondering with that fertilizer you used, um, do you do you mix it? I shake it. And so I put it in the watering can and then put the water in and it just like the water entering the can, it just churns up okay. everything and mixes it. It just didn't seem like that hard of a, like the water coming in didn't seem like it would, it would churn it. Oh, it, it enough, was. Maybe? Mm-hmm. Was it? Yeah, it definitely was. Classically Mish said, I noticed you watered in the Hartley from the top. Do you ever water from the bottom near the roots? Nope. Um, unless it's an African violet that I might. Have you ever thought about doing that with the trays behind you? Because they're sealed. Yeah, except for it'd be a mess and it would be Cause stinky. You, yeah, because you'd have to clean it all out. Yeah, I think watering from the top has just worked better for me traditionally. Uh, Karen said, love the arrangement, Laura. Do you always use a top dress on your indoor plants? What do you typically use? I like to use moss. I like to use little rocks, but they have to be like little like gray rocks or sometimes like a matte black. Um, sometimes... I, some of them have sand on them because I was trying to get rid of a fungus gnat problem last year. I won't do that again. Uh, but that's why there's some sand on the top of some of them. And Nellie said, did you also work for a florist like your mom? Your arrangements are always so beautiful. Thank you. Um, I did not work for a florist, but my mom is a florist. So let you picked go. up some things. Yeah. Um, Ellen Gresham said, listening to Laura go over the koi in this video, is it six koi plus one shark plus four extra koi equals 11? No. Six koi plus four koi equals 10 koi plus an extra koi that's in there equals 11 koi and the shark. See, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what though? When you were explaining it to me, yeah, I was confused as well. I should never have talked about the shark. The shark is throwing everything off. Yeah. There's 11 koi and one shark, 12 fish. Maybe I just shouldn't have mentioned it at all. It well, doesn't really matter. Sometimes I think when you explain things, you I'm don't mad. explain yeah. what it's not. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times people will say things two ways just to make sure that people are aware. Aaron's always like, is it everyone else or is it you? Possibly. <laughs> well, I'm like, no, it's probably me. If you're complaining about it, then it, it could be you. <laughs> yeah. 
but I have a way of squirreling information around. Well, in I a think way what it is that... is that you you will never explain what something isn't, and sometimes people need that. It's like they, they you tell them a little bit, like this is what it is. But it's like, well, that could be interpreted two ways. Mm -hmm. And so, but if you tell them what it isn't, then it puts it in a box. It's like, oh, it can only be the one thing Mm -hmm. because she told me the one thing that it's not. It does, you do run the risk when you're talking to other people though, of making it seem like you're talking down to them or... Me? Oh, when you do that? Just in general, not you specifically, but just, you know, when you like go over things multiple times, it's kind of like, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's no. like you're treating them like a, like they're a child, mm-hmm. but also it can help. I know. And people... you know, you're always really good about that too, because there's a lot of like beginner gardening subjects that I just assume because I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. I just feel like, I don't know, like I don't want to make people feel like that. Like I'm talking down to them, giving them the basics, you know, you know but I you're also, like, people need that. Though. I wonder if this is like a female thing too, because I heard some guys talking about this and among men, like the whole mansplaining thing among men, men will jump in and will interrupt and say, Oh, I know that part skip. And the the man that's explaining will be like, good. They actually like it when you interrupt and say, I know that part, go to the next one. And then they'll jump to the next one. But women won't. Aaron does that to me. (laughs) Women will just wait and they'll sit there and they'll tap their foot. Because, like, what an idiot that he's explaining the whole thing. When they could have just, like, jumped in and said, oh, I know this part. Go to the next part. And then the man would be happy to jump to the next part. So, anyway, I don't know if that's true or not. But I kind of wonder if it is a little bit. Maybe. Because I, I know that's true from uh-huh. my perspective. Because he'll, a lot of time, I'm trying to explain something. And he'll you'll just, like, interrupt and just talk. Right? It's a waste of time. Well, yeah, it's a waste of everyone's time. Because you don't need to see. <laughs> And then I'll say, like, Aaron, let me finish the sentence. He's like, I know what you're going to say. I don't need you to say it. I'm like, yeah, but do you know what that's doing to me? What is it doing to you? It's just making me rage. Like, well, I'm going to rage that's out. A, that's a thing then. Maybe, like, women think that men will rage out if they don't aren't able to, like, speak their piece. Uh-huh. When really it's like, I just wanted you to know the thing. And as long as I know you know the thing, we're all good. I don't need to actually say it. And, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Again... The, like maybe none of this is true I don't know so we have 11 koi and one <laughs> shark that's what we have <laughs> oh my goodness I need a fan <laughs> do you does that make you hot and bothered yes talk about things like that yes because then women like me myself then I, like if that happens then I'll remember all the other times that it's happened oh, and I'm like Ooh, here it goes again okay you just need to be chill I am chill you most chill of the time. out it's cool Cool Do you off. think I'm a chill person, Aaron? No. <sighs> Do you think you're a chill person? I think I am in some ways. I don't enter into drama. No, you don't. I do not enter into drama. No. I do not enter into... And I into, really appreciate yeah, that about you. Yeah, I don't do Because I can't stand... I don't enter into with other... Like, I'll talk to Aaron or, like, my mom about, like, things, you know, situations around me and stuff, but I don't yeah. enter into gossip. Either but just like general complaining about other people, I'm like, oh, geez, no. just don't like quit talking to that person. If it if it bothers right. you to be around that person or talk with them, like just yeah, you are in control of yeah, your own in, destiny. Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think that there's a lot of ways that I'm chill, but there's a lot of ways I'm not. Yeah, I I get that because I like I like like to roll. But you know what? I think that people who are not chill and want things a certain way, it's like you know you'll accomplish a lot of things and you'll make sure it's perfect and you know, but like you'll make sure that the details. I feel like I'm getting less detailed or like details are becoming a little less important. Yeah. But like, what if Michelangelo was just like, nah, it looks okay. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. You know, it's like some people are perfectionists and, Mm -hmm. and as well as talented. And I think that's, that's good. You know, We're just learning all kinds of things today. (laughs) Next video was giving away. I think this is the last video. Have we made it through all of them already? Yeah, I think so. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Last one is giving away pumpkins, planting a redwood from Alaska. Susan from Alaska sent us out a box of goodies. Um, There were some honeyberries in there, too. So I still have those. Um, And evergreens for the dumpster urns. 
So we took the, the bulk of our pumpkin and squash harvest. We had already given you know, what we were gonna give away, away to family and friends. I uh, kept some back for decorating our Thanksgiving table and also for storing to eat. And then all the rest of them, we just took down to the garden center, put them on pallets with free signs. And they were gone in an hour and a half. Boom. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, Lori said, do you keep records of what plants work and what doesn't on your property? Uh, our records are our videos, which unfortunately it can be a little bit of a beast to find information sometimes with the amount of videos that we do put out. That's why I try. Like Aaron was telling me the other day, like your titles are getting really long because I'll send him the title for the video. And I, but I am trying to like make sure I put in the title what is in that video Yeah. for a couple of reasons. One, I want you guys to know what you're in for. These are the three projects I tackled in this video. And then also for searching purposes, right. it makes it easier if like, when did I plant that redwood? Well, let's see, let's search Garden Answer Redwood and it'll be in that title. So it comes up, you know. Speaking of which, I don't know if this is part of there, but um, I saw a couple people that are like, I don't think that's a redwood. Oh, and really? I don't even really know. I, don't I mean, know. I know what like a full grown redwood looks like, but I don't, yeah. I don't know what they look like in their baby slash teenage years no me either it's a pretty tree either way yeah christine said so much beautiful fall color uh question that tree on your left at eleven thirty one. what is that love the bark and feathery branches that's aaron's tree oh is that the shiny brave mm -hmm. nice a bald cypress yeah it's uh you can tell on the inside it's turning a, a beautiful russet color do you love do you love the russet trees i do uh, Kathy said the new space is coming along nicely. Question, is there some place where I can order red branch dogwood stems? I remember you ordering stems of various types for your projects. For your projects, some garden centers, like um, if you were local and you wanted specific types of green branches or berried branches, holly branches, red twig dogwood, you could order them through your local garden center. A lot of times, which I haven't ordered any and I, it might be too late. <laughs> For me, um, I order through my parents and I'll get like a box of princess pine and that way I can tuck it into planters. Uh, your local florist too, they have access to all that stuff. So if you go in and visit with them, a lot of times they can get you in magnolia branches, seeded uke, um, all kinds of beautiful things. Amy said, I live for any of your videos invol involving a pumpkin slash squash haul. Uh, silly question, are all of those edible, even the teeny tiny ones? Which ones would you really recommend for eating and or that store well? Not all of those are necessarily the best. You could eat any one of those though. Um, but some of them will be a little bit more mealy. Some of them won't have as good of a flavor. Uh, sweet meats are really good. They store for a really long time. Sweet beets? Sweet meat. It's meat. the blue ones. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and they're like, they're tough to cut into, but they store for a long time. Butternuts, of course, acorns are great. The pie pumpkins are great um, and better than like the carving type pumpkins. They're called pie pumpkins? They're called, yeah, sugar oh. or pie pumpkins. These are sugar pie pumpkins. Um, so yeah, and most descriptions will tell you like excellent for baking or excellent for pies, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Candy said, did I spy Christmas lights on the barn? Nope. No? Although we, get we should probably get that. going, yeah. Yeah, there are Christmas lights, however, all over in Benjamin's room. <laughs> he's been like, <laughs> he, he's such a festive, festive little kid. He goes up into the barn and grabs. Yeah, different colors of lights and yeah. then they work on twisting it around different pieces of furniture and like running it on the floor. So there's a blue and purple and yellow, pink, green up there right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Judy said, I've noticed that ever, that after you put compost on top of the ground, that when you dig down later to plant, the dirt is not that powdery light brown. Brown. Light brown. <laughs> if you quit adding compost and land and see, would the dirt revert back? Eventually. Um, I mean, we try to add so much good stuff around the plants and then we top dress with compost as well, which is more expensive for sure. But I think it's returning so much mm -hmm. in our soil quality, the health of our plants and, and so on. So it's, I think it's a good investment, at least in these beginning years to cover that powder, help with, it ha does help with weed suppression a bit. Um, and it's helping. I think it helps a lot with nourish. weed suppression. Yeah. I mean, but it's so fine because it's a compost that weeds will sprout in there, but it will suppress things that are already there Yeah, for sure. Stephanie said, seeing those yellow twig dogwoods at the garden center made me think, have you done a video on pruning red slash yellow twig dogwoods? I have. I have a drift of ivory halo dogwoods, red stems in the winter that we planted two years ago now. So next year we will be their third season. And I feel a little intimidated on how best to prune in the early spring to maintain their most vibrant winter stem color. So the most vibrant winter stem color you will get will be on first year branches on the newer 
your stuff. There's two methods you can use to prune your dogwoods. You can either go in every other year and hack them all the way down. This is a very easy way to do it. There's no guesswork. You just put it on your schedule every other year to do it. That way you have a fresh crop of stems and those can last for two seasons. They'll be nice and vibrant and then you'll cut it back and it'll do the same thing. If you're using your dogwoods to block something though, um, then you'll lose that block for a short amount of time. Thankfully dogwoods grow quickly so they will fill back in. The other method you could do is go in every single year and cut out a third of the older branches. It's very easy to tell because they get kind of quirky and brown, the bark changes, it gets more aged looking. So go in and take out some of those older branches so that the plant has energy to then send into some new ones. Those are the two methods. Pat said, I'm amazed uh, you can also operate a forklift. Oh, I've done it for so many years now. Um, I kind of miss it a little bit in that like all of our stuff that we have to drive around, I'm thankful for it, but it's a lot harder. Forklifts are so nice and easy, but they don't really, those drive on gravel down at Andrews, but to find a machine. Kind of, not yeah, thick kind gravel. Yeah, kind of, not thick gravel, they do get stuck. Um, anyway, I love how they turn. I'm so used to driving them, it just feels like I don't know, the easiest thing to drive around. Uh, is that what made Aaron want to marry you? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> no. <laughs> My forklift driving skills. Yeah. Oh, that's so no, funny. No, that wasn't on the list. I don't know if I was actually driving them around when we got married. Do you know, um, I remember one of the things that um, I was attracted to you. One, I don't know how to say that. I get it. That attracted me to you. Uh -huh was um, like your ability, and you don't think that you're strong in this, but I felt like you were, you were strong in social situations. Oh. Like you knew what to say, or you felt comfortable or confident, but not annoyingly confident. You know what I mean? Like some people are kind of like too outgoing to where it's like, it can kind of be in your face. Mm -hmm. um, you just had like this like confident, Ness to you where it's like you knew what to say when to say it but not to be annoying and not to come off as being shy either mm. you just were like I don't know I thought that was question is am I still like that Erin yeah I think you are oh, I just I don't, don't think, think so. that you think that you are <laughs> but I still think you are I'm such an introvert yeah you are a big introvert mm -hmm. but I kind of am too so yeah I'm we're well matched you know what though it makes like we spend a lot of time at home. Mm -hmm. We have a job where we can be at home, like building, you mm -hmm. know, the gardens and stuff like that. And we, we both like it. Mm -hmm. And so we don't need to go places. And we live in a place, we live a part of the world where it's like, there's not a lot to do here aside from being at your house anyway. There's Boise an hour away. Yeah. But, um, so it, it works out. Yeah. Mike said, thank you for your wonderful videos. I have a tree question for you and Aaron. Why is it that so many of the tree varieties these days have so many suckers coming up at the base of the trees soon after planting? Is it because they are hybrids? I just don't remember seeing so many trees with this problem when I was growing up, but maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I do see like some. suckers. Yeah. I think for me in our own garden, the only trees that really sucker are a few of our crab apples and our choke cherry. Willows will. But not from the base. We don't see like a bunch of suckering from the base of the well, willow trees. We don't really trees. plant any willows anymore. No, we're just kind of like babying the ones that we have. Um, and... Maples will, but I, okay, like I want to say that they do that when they're not happy. Hmm. When there's like something that's not quite right. Or they're just with... uh, extra vigorous. Maybe. Tree. Yeah. But. I still would lean towards something is wrong with mm. the tree. Like it's, that's telling you that it's, um, it's not love. Not that it can't like pull out of it mm -hmm. or that it won't pull out, but it's, I don't think that's a, I don't think it does that just normally with a healthy tree. Mm. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't, I don't really, I haven't really paid attention to that too much. I just cut I've them away and then that, move on. I've only like in my mind, I'm trying to think of the times that I've seen that. And it mm -hmm. seems like. Uh, you can usually tell by like the leaves or something else that, you know, it's like defoliating early or it's, it's burning a little bit. I think there's some that are just more susceptible to doing Maybe. it. You might be right. Too. Um, because we'll see it in containers at the nursery. Yeah. You know, crab apples being one that do it a lot. Um, anyway, uh, last question. Tia said, I would love to have a GA hat. Any plans of adding them to the site? Yeah. Um, yeah, we got uh, samples made. So, oh, those were samples, so they're yeah, not out yet. They're not for sale yet, but yeah, we got the samples, so we'll, we'll add them. Cool. They'll be there soon. And that is it, you guys, for today's recap video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great start to your week, and we will see you in the next one.